evening. A uh, bit of a late update this week. Um, but I sort of cover some topics that are important. <clears throat> I've sort of been bedridden for the last three days. Um, only just eaten for the first time um, a few hours ago. I haven't eaten for three three days. Um, but illness has a major impact on many things. Uh, whether you're travelling or an expat. Because you've got to be aware, wherever you are, your immune system's adapting to a new environment. Um, I mean, it's like this flu bug we've got here. It seems extremely strong compared to um, what I'm used to in the UK. Um, so you've got coughing, vomiting, uh, LBM, stomach cramps, all sorts. It's pretty, pretty horrific. Um, but everyone's caught it as well, so... Just stuff to be aware of like that, because if you're traveling, what you're going to do if it happens? This is why medical insurance is often something that you may think, ah, forget about it. But then if you're traveling through somewhere and you're supposed to be there two days and then catch something serious and you're stuck there for two weeks and have to go into a hospital and maybe even airlifted. Um, a friend of mine, uh, his wife got something, I think, well, I think it was Tunisia. I'm not sure if it was Tunisia or Spain, but... It was serious to the point that they had to take a helicopter low level back to the UK. Um, it was covered on the insurance through their credit cards for, from paying for the holiday. Um, I think the whole thing cost over £20,000. Because it was the only way they could get back. They couldn't actually go by plane because of the altitude. Because his, his wife was that ill. Um, so you got to take those sorts of things on, on board. That Yeah, you may think, oh, I'm physically well, blah, blah, blah. But something can come along and hit you quite hard, quite quite quickly. Um, now, why do I bother putting all this sort of stuff out even when I'm ill? Because I like to show things as they are, the reality. Um, you do get critics that want to run you down regardless. Um, it's like, the way the easiest way I could probably put this is if I won the lottery, say I won £50 million, their argument would be, well, only idiots do the lottery. That, that's the mentality of some people. Um, now, myself, I don't gamble in the lottery anyway, but I'm just saying it doesn't matter what you're doing. There will always be somebody that goes, well, that's crap, that's crap. They do it with everything. So if you're doing this sort of stuff, be aware. You're going to get the idiots. They're, they're negative pretty much on everything. Um, but thankfully, they're only a minority. Uh November's a busy month for us, which is quite nasty that I've got this bloody bug at the minute because I've got a lot of stuff to do um, that could outline where we're going. Um, because if, if everything goes to plan this month and next month, um, we'll be planning our trip back to the Philippines in January. Uh, not for January, in January. Um, so that we can actually start planning to go back home for a bit um, catch up on the family and stuff and do a bit of construction work and some other bits and pieces so there's a lot of stuff going on <coughs> um, what else do I want to talk about today let me have a pause regarding health cover um, I've got some information to share for the Philippines um, but also if you're moving to Spain long term um, you can get this transfer of your contributions in the UK. It's, it's called an S1, the S1 form. Um, because obviously I'm paying uh, for healthcare in the UK and I'm not there. I can actually transfer those contributions to Spain, um, which I'm doing at the moment. That's something that's 90% there. I've just got to send this letter out to Spain for them to talk to the UK and then that's sorted. The same with the tax, transferring my tax over from the UK. Um, although I do think later on I'm going to go self-employed again. Um, what I need to do is work out how I can become a international <coughs> company in Spain. Uh, the reason being is I'm giving a lot of money away at the minute um, in expenses. Uh, although I can get contributions for mileage and things like that from the UK, I'm thinking the UK system for self-employment is rubbish now um they have 
screwed it right down to the point um, I know myself if the work isn't in my area I'm not interested in doing it and I know other people have gone the same way um, because they're only like oh well you pay your mileage da 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 but like things like the training and um, membership of professional bodies you've got to claim it back at the end of the year and all these you think oh well that's not a lot well if I'm doing uh, a training course it's going to cost me one half thousand pounds why should I not be able to get that tax deducted at day one because obviously if I'm paying it up front I should be able to get the rebate on it um, but hey ho the the UK in its pearl of wisdom is hammering the small business man as usual or small business person should I say um, but anyway so transferring my healthcare over from the UK I'm already covered here anyway because I'm self-employed as well I paid contributions twice at the minute um, but I want to cancel that as soon as I can because I don't see why I should be paying double because um, obviously here I'm also paying for accountancy fees I pay accountancy fees, social security fees um, when I don't need to be paying it because obviously if I'm employed in the UK and they transfer over I only have an annual report I have for tax which is much much easier um, but like I said, I do want to see about going self-employed, but that'll be next year. I'm not too fussed this year at the moment. I just need to get all this other paperwork done. Um, I've had a load of uh, healthcare stuff come through for the Philippines as well. Somebody's been very useful um, in putting some charts and that together for comparisons. So I'll be doing a video on that shortly. Um, I should have done it sooner. And I apologise for the guy who sent it, because quite simply I've just been busy and like now I'm not in the best of health today. Um, so that's another thing. Um, <coughs> but all, all things so far seem to be going quite well. Things seem to be dropping into place at last. Because um, this is one of the things people forget. When they watch TV shows, um, even if you watch a fishing programme, you watch a half hour or one hour fishing programme, there's no mention they've been there a week to get the fish. There's no mention of that. What you see is like as if they've just gone fishing for that day. Um, with expat life like this, it's the real pace. So I can't fast forward things, you know, and so, well, that should be done already. Guess what? That's bureaucracy. Bureaucracy does that. Um, there's no quick method through this because of the. Um, changes that have been going on on in spain uh it's sort of a bit of a awkward situation because they're not anti-immigration here they just make it very difficult to get through the process um because it doesn't cost them anything so if you just make it difficult to do the paperwork it doesn't doesn't bother them in the slightest um which will get me on to my final point the brexit now, I will say that Donald Trump and the Brexit has sort of changed the game. Um, Donald Trump is already talking trade with the UK, where Obama was looking at blocking it. So, pretty much, that's a game changer, because in Europe, they were relying on the US and others not doing any more trade with the UK, because it stops anything moving, it stops anything changing. Um, which sort of shows the allegiance that Obama had because he shouldn't be that interested in what the EU EU's up to it's, you know he should be in the best interest of America um, so I'll be honest with you although I'm not a fan of Trump um, I did not want Clinton getting in <laughs> I did not <coughs> um, I've seen too much bad stuff over the years um, to have the same old, same old. Uh, I don't know what changes uh, Trump will do, but if it actually creates some change in the stability of um, people being in jobs for life in the Senate, etc., then that may be a positive thing. Because the problem is, like the UK, the politics have become stagnant because they've become self-serving. Um, so that's... That's Trump and the Brexit for me. Um, but also think that 
the changes are a bit like Duterte. You know, the negative media that Trump was getting is very similar to what Duterte was getting. Um, it still continues with a lot of the press because they only show it from one viewpoint. Um, I mean, it's like Farage. Farage is getting some negative stuff. Now, it's not that a support the guy in any way whatsoever, but <coughs> some of the media is misleading. But then again, so the 350 million a year that was going to the, they were going to put in the, the NHS, etc. But it seems that's the way politics has gone. And I think this is why Trump won. It's quite simply, they've got to a stage where people don't believe the media anymore. So just having change was enough. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's just change. That's all people wanted. They've been lied to for so long that having the opportunity to change something took priority. And I can understand that because it's what frustrates me in the UK. We have no leadership that can actually change the system um, because we have the same problem. We have the same people day in, day out that do stuff to suit themselves. They have huge expenses. They vote on their own pay rises and they're pretty much controlled by lobbyists. And I'm sick of it. You know, it sort of disgusts me because... For business people, development in, you know, you can get so far with a small business, but you're going to struggle get get to the next level because so much is controlled by the powers that be. I see it in contracts. I see how people are locked into certain things purely because of influence, nothing else. And I think that's what's wrong with the UK. I think that's what's wrong with the US. And I think that's what's wrong with the Philippines. The unhooking that has now changed things. The Brexit has now been unhooked because prior to Trump, the UK was in the wind. This is why when Trump was offering trade deals, they were on the, the news the first hour afterwards. Trade. Trump wants to do trade because up to that they're going. It's a secret. We can't tell you what we're going to do. We can't tell you what we're going to do because you had no trade deals. It's like India. You know this visit to India, pointless. India will not do anything. India. India serves itself. It always has done. Um, it's a bit like China. Their economies are about looking after themselves. Um, if you look at China and how the British forced them to do trade, you'll see what I mean. Because they, they, they like stuff being coming out. They don't like buying stuff. They never have done. All right. Thanks for watching.